Ed, or you want this other gentleman? Whatever yeah. you want to do, Mr. Chairman, it's your call. Let him finish. Let, go ahead on and finish that. All right. You, Th thank you, you, sir. I'm going to be just a little bit on okay. uh, Gentlemen, I may have to step on a few toes, but if I do, we'll let the chip fall. I've received a lot of calls. I spent quite a bit of time out in the uh, fact I was there yesterday back again in uh, the Beacon Hill area along with the I'll get into it later the uh, Overstreet area but at our last meeting we passed an ordinance and I voted against it for several reasons and one of the reasons that I'm on address today is code enforcement you shouldn't make laws that you can't enforce we don't have a code enforcement department. I'm sorry to say we have a code enforcement person that works in the building department. But when people call me and I can come out and I can see vagrant violations, I don't know what's going on. I call and report things in. I never get a reply back. It's been addressed, this or that, nothing. But until we establish a code enforcement in this county, we're wasting our time. Now, I was out yesterday on Nutmeg and Olive. There's a boat been sitting there, Sheriff, and I'm sure your deputies have seen it too. It's in the right of way. I called code enforcement over two weeks ago. I was back yesterday. I have pictures here. If any of you would like to take my phone and look at them, you're more than welcome. It's still sitting there. And it'll probably be sitting there this time next year. It's in the right of way. It's a hazard there. And the sad part of it, right across the street, they're building a nice home. And I asked the people there, the uh, Hinkle family, I said, have you had any inspections on your house? Oh, yes. And I get thinking, code enforcement is part of the building department, the building department. You're the already inspecting the house 35 feet away, and they can't see this obstacle in the road right over here. Enough's enough. And we're either going to get a department and get a code enforcement and start pushing this. Now, take down, I got corrected at the last meeting, and I think it's Cockle Street. Set them a vehicle yesterday. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 14 RVs at the end of the street. Is it a RV Park? We don't know. This is something we're going to do. If we're going to pass these things, we need to enforce them. If not, we need to stop. I just want to hit on that. We are not getting anything out of our code enforcement. I see these over and over. B. Mm, scared me. Good Lord. <laughs> Beacon Hill. <laughs> yeah, boom. Beacon Hill, it looks rough out there. <clears throat> now let's drop on down to Overstreet. I've got call after call. When I first got elected, the people in Overstreet said they didn't want to be a part of District 2. I said, I'll help you. So we moved it to District 3. They said, we feel more comfortable in District 3. I said, well, I agree with you. So we reestablished lines. I was going to break it at the canal, but to get the numbers right, we had to drop all the way up to Pleasant Rest. All right, in 2019, that got back, bounced back into District 2. Now then, I've got all the old street back plus Beacon Hill. These areas went neglected. The people want me to straighten out the problems out there in a week. I can't do it. I can't do it. The roads are terrible. There's debris still from Hurricane Michael laying in the right of ways there. It looks like a third world country. And I'm asking this board to step up. I need help in the Overstreet area and in the Pleasant Rest area, and I need help in the Beacon Hill area. Streets are falling all to pieces. There's debris everywhere. Nothing. The only way we're going to straighten up Over Street is we're going to have to hire a contractor. You can't go. I'll call Public Works, Mr. Coffin, his number two man there. They'll go out and do right here. Boom. Gone. That won't fix it. We, we can't 
put a shingle on the roof. We got to put a new roof on out there, and we got to get a contractor or somebody to go out there and get this for eight years. That place was more or less neglected. Now then, they want me to get it all back up in a week. I can't do it. Roads are all to pieces, ditches full. We can't. We don't have the personnel to do it. I don't know what we're going to do, board. But this is a board problem. It's not my problem. It's in the district I represent. But all five of us need you. You need to ride out and look. Go out there and look. Go to Beacon Hill. Just drive those streets back in there and look and see what you see. We've got issues in that area, along with issues all over the county. But that area, has, that over street area, has been neglected, people. But I don't want it to see it that way. I need your help. That's all. That's all. That's all you know. All right. Commissioner, uh, you want me to eat? Harris? Okay, that's right. Yeah. All right. Hold on. Before before we go to him, though, I'm going to just, you guys want to discuss this? What uh, Commissioner McDaniel talked about? Or are we going to come back to this? Uh, we can discuss it, Mr. Okay. Chairman. I, that's fine with me. Uh, and, and, and just to uh, let's go along with Commissioner McDaniel and, uh, and let's take it off the department a little bit, guys, because they're not fully staffed. They're understaffed. We got one code enforcement guy. It's not his fault. Listen, I'm, and and we've got a tremendous amount of building going on in the county. These guys, they work hard too. Now, I'm not saying they're perfect, but but they work hard. And, and there's a ton of I see the plans that come in every week. I, I, I'm I'm in the building department just about every week, guys. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, it's, it's it's overwhelming what's being built and what what what's going on and and, uh, and as far as code enforcement, I, I agree with Commissioner McDaniel. We, we do need to do something. And, and, you know, that's on us to, you know, we need to add more staff or whatever we need to do. I've, I've got I've got areas in my my district that need attention also. And and uh, uh, we just need to move forward. I, I've had some spots that that has been going on for a while. And and and, and to kick back also, we've got to put some teeth in some of these these ordinances. I mean, you, they turn in a, a violation, and the people might work on it one day and, and get it, you know, back in the good graces, and a week later, two weeks, you're back in the same boat. So, so at the end of the day, it's it's, it's not it's not necessarily these guys' fault. It, you know, we we've got to move forward and, and do some changes. But. All right, thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Could yes. I uh, make just a quick comment yes, on there? Going back, uh, let's go back to Overstreet. In District 2, up in the Weaver Hitchcock area, right now we're in the process of getting 386 paved. Uh, but we submitted, we had some money submitted to get some roads paved. In the county, resurfaced and new pavement. Jimmy Helms Road, Road 5, Settlers Ridge, James Pitts Road, Arthur Street, Patrick Street, Timberline, Midway Park, Rip Hall Road, Williams Street, Spring Street, Iola. We went in and got it resurfaced and added two more miles to it. Jarrett Daniels Road, Texas Street. That's just in the county. And in the city of Weaver Hitchcock, we got West Church, Winnie Street, Williamsburg, Mitchell Road, Oliver Street, and Hurd. How many did we get in the Old Street area? I got some streets paved in District 2 in the north end of the county and in the city. That's a lot. And now then, Commissioner Rich, you've inherited Arthur Street, Patrick Street, Midway, Rip Hall, Oliver Road, and in the city, Oliver and Hurd. When we redistrict, so you're in good shape. I want to tell you, you're in good shape. But I'm going to leave it at that, Mr. Chairman. We need some help in the Beacon Hill, Over Street, and the Pleasant Rest Cemetery Road, along with other areas in this county. we got to address it. We just can't keep ignoring it. They pay taxes, too. So either we got to help them or take them off the tax roll. We don't want to do that. So let's let's... Let's get something. Let's stop this talking. Let's get something moving. Okay? 
I'm through now. That's it. Well, you want to answer? Yeah, yeah, please. Okay. Because, okay. because again, let's let's get to a solution. Uh, for the vehicles in the right of way, we get the sheriff's office, we get them red tagged, and get them towed. That's something that can be done quick. Uh, you do have teeth in your code enforcement ordinance that you just put in a couple months ago, and we have started tearing crap down, and we, and we'll continue to. But also understand there still is a process. We just don't go in and it's, a, you know, it, there's some third world countries in several sections of this county. And, and again, there still is a process. So we have to notice the folks and then we still have the public hearing. But again, we're, we're down to a 45 to 60 day process instead of a couple year process. So there's a lot of things in the hopper. But again, the goal was initially that if we start cleaning these places up, that folks will get the idea and they don't want to, you know, pay extra money and they clean their own crap up. So far that's not happening. And again, we will run out of money on cleaning stuff up and leaning, uh, waiting for the property taxes to be sold the next year pretty quick. But again, right now there's probably half a dozen in the hopper to be torn down, but we've already let bids on them. Uh, they've already torn down a couple and, and hauled them off. So that process is starting, but the right of way stuff we can handle a lot quicker. If, if there's an abandoned car in the right of way or abandoned anything, garbage, boat, trailer, whatever, I think the sheriff's office can handle that with a couple day deal with a red tag. So I'll be diligent in starting to work on that at Beacon Hill immediately. Uh, the debris stuff on the right of way, uh, I get Mark to go look at it and figure out what it's going to take uh, again. If it's on the right of way and nobody's claiming it, then you know it's going to be up to us to, to clean it up. If it's somebody that's, that's on their property, then we need to make them clean it up. But uh, I'll commit to you to get staff to work with you in these areas and figure out the game plan where we can get it cleaned up, if possible. Thank you. Yes, sir. A part of what Mr. Ward had talked about, the, if you have not been down to Pleasant Rest Cemetery Road since Hurricane Michael, it is a paradigm change of what it was prior to Hurricane Michael. Thousands of pine trees have been taken down from the storm and then in conjunction with Deseret clearing property. However, the roadside ditch on Pleasant Rest cannot handle the amount of water that comes from the north side of the road from Deseret's property. So, I've, and, and this is negligent on my part for not to keep Mr. Ward informed of what's going on. I've had multiple talks with Deseret and their government liaison about digging a ditch inside their property. Our, our ditch can't handle the water. And what happens is our ditches fill up in the water for five or 600 yards of a paved road goes underwater and, uh, and we can't get it off. I mean, so we, we had in the NRCS program, we dug a 1400 and something foot long ditch that goes to Weetapo that, that we thought would you know, see if that would help. It didn't. We went down the road and dug another one to a to a pond area, and and the water will get off eventually. But I'm talking days. This this paved road will be underwater. So third world type conditions. He is not exaggerating. So I've I've had multiple talks with Deseret, met him on site, had phone conversations with him. With with the idea that that they would dig a ditch on the inside of their property, running parallel with the Pleasant Rest Cemetery Road, from the west side of Wetapo subdivision back to Wetapo Creek. And essentially that would catch the watershed off of the north part of, of Pleasant Rest Cemetery off of Deseret property. It would hit a ditch before it hit our ditch in an effort to curtail the water before it gets to the paved road. Now in the subdivision itself, we have drainage problems that we have never had before. And it, and it has to be attributed to things that happen after the storm. So, I mean, there's, there's private roads in there that don't have culvert pipes under the road. It blocks up water, it holds it up. Um, there's in in the actual Overstreet subdivision, we spent about three weeks digging ditches there. So most everybody was excited about it. We had some people stand out there and, and didn't want us to dig their ditch for whatever reason. It's right away, so we ended up doing it, but you have conflict doing it. You have people laying illegal pipes without getting culvert permits that are laying them at the wrong grade, changes all the water flow. You have to go back in and identify which ones are illegal and, and which ones were laid wrong, and then relay the pipe. So it. And, and then the road situation he speaks to the pavement in Overstreet is terrible. I mean, you have roads, and, and we had actually applied for Borders Road, and and not not on our behalf, but it was postponed. Is that right? Yeah, that's postponed a year. I mean, that that road is is almost 
not patchable. I mean, we patch it to the point to where it, it's, it's almost not like a paved road. So he, he does have major issues with pavement in the Overstreet and, and the up the Overstreet Road and some of the subdivisions and drainage is still a problem. But but we ha we do have things that we're constantly working for. But I can assure you, my in-laws live down Pleasant Road Cemetery Road. If I could make the water go off of that road, I would have already done it. But but we've tried multiple things and and we're just we're going to have to get Deseret involved and use their property for a ditch. I mean, the county can't handle it. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I understand, uh, former Commissioner. Uh, Rogers did submit Pleasant Rest to be resurfaced. Mr. Smallwood, is that correct? All right, so, but if we're going to resurface it, we sure would be nice to have this ditch if Desiree. I know we have. Well, that's the same way out in Overstreet. Hardy Street over there. See, it connects South Canal and South Long. It looked like when it had a bog in. I, w I wouldn't even put my vehicle down it yesterday. It's terrible. Let me add just one thing, too, yes, and, and again, this is a bigger issue. Uh, I only remember one time in my life prior to, to 2018, 22 going underwater at Sandy Creek. Three it, places yesterday. At a dozen times and since Hurricane Michael, it's going underwater. Somebody got killed in a car wreck on the Bay County side, hydroplaned and, and run off several wrecks. But the the area from Pleasant Rest north to at least to 22, probably north of that, is so clogged and so, uh, and of course, Deseret, the, the, the change has put all, a lot more water going to that, both to 22 and to, to Weetapo Creek. Weetapo Creek is the only way that's going to drain and go to, to the canal. There's nothing we can do about that. I mean, that maybe the federal government could do something about it, the core DEP, but, but that watershed where that drains it is it there's a lot more volume on the north end when you think the bottleneck would be on the south south of pleasant rest road it's 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 flowing fine there it's all north and then of course now you had the buddy floor bridge going underwater two or three times 22 uh, and pleasant rest and just like you said it'll stay up days on the pleasant rest road which is going to destroy that road so uh we need some help, but a lot of it is the change from pine tree growing to cowing and, and them cutting and draining that property, and it's all going to that watershed that can't handle it. I got a quick question. So we talked about road paving. So when was the last time we, we did that road? We went out and did road paving. When we, we, uh, we put those roads on that list. I want to say 2014, 2015. Mm -hmm. 2015? Yeah. Around 13, 14. Yes. Okay. All right. So 2015. So how many roads from Overstreet and Beacon Hill was on that list? The only one I remember in Overstreet was South Long. Uh, and I think they put Hummingbird, but it's not. No, it was not a county, county road. road. So one? Off the top of my head, that's the only one I remember. I, I'm not aware of another one at Beacon Hill. Let me ask you this, Michael. I know we'd 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 put in for some road resurfacing you know, from Hurricane Michael. Have we? That's right. Gained any ground on that, or, or? it's still pending? It's about five million now. Now, most of that was where the surge came in, so it's mm -hmm. going to be in the St. Joe Beach and Beacon Hill area, uh, which will help certainly will help the Beacon Hill area. It won't help the Overstreet area. Now again. The biggest problem and the biggest complaint we get from the Overstreet area is areas that are not county roads. That Hummingbird, Mallard, and Pond, and whatever they're north of the bridge to the to the west side, what I would call the west side, is not county road, and it is a disaster. Uh, no drainage. Uh, the, the road is on one side of the of the right of way that butts up directly against the property and doesn't have and it's it's passed backwards. The the road is going the wrong way. Flip probably road a bad word to say, but but that's right. So that again. But it's a subdivision that was not to county standards, and it's not a county road. So, and that, and we get a lot of calls about that, and we have tried to go out there and help just to get the bus to pass. But again, we can't fix every private road right, right. in the county. Right. So, so, so my, so my question is. There out it of, is. Yesterday, out of all those streets uh, and old streets, solid water in Beacon Hill since 2015. 
it was only one county road that you know of that was put on that list. So, so my next question is, those streets that you looked at, the majority of them are county roads. The heart is, we, we grade it. it. It ties South Canal and South Long together. <clears throat> sure does. Then you got a little old tugboat down there, a little old spur off of it. But then you go on in there to Sunshine. Conway all in there. It just flooded out in there. I'm telling you, people, it's a mess. Is those all county roads? Oh yes. So, so what I'm what I'm getting at is this. I, so back in 2015, when we came up that road list, and you weren't representing that district back then. No, I didn't you know, represent. You. And um, I can't. Even, I, I don't even remember which commissioner was. I don't know if Mr. Ro no, Mr. I don't know if Mr. Rogers was on that district. But I remember them asking me for a list of roads in my district, and I probably put a four or five roads on my district in my district on that list. To get them paid, and they got them paid. So the the, the issue goes back to you know I mean, I'm glad you're speaking up for that district, uh, you know making that point now, because if we had that road pavement coming back up again, then we can add those county roads to that list. But it comes back to and you speaking up like 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 you should, and we all should represent our district and should speak up for issues when issues arrive. And I'm glad you're doing that in reference to this road pavement because if someone had spoke up back then, we, we those roads would have probably been paid by now. You know, so I appreciate you speaking up for that. But that's what that's what we're here for. We're elected to speak up for our district. I don't mind speaking up for my district. If something needs to be done, I get on the phone with Mr. Hammond. If it can't, if he can't get it done, I'll bring it to the board, then we'll try to get it done. But normally staff are able to work things out and make sure things happen. So when eventually, hopefully, we'll get us another chance for a road paving contract. And if we do, we can get these roads squared away and took care of. So I just wanted to add that, that part to it. Um, any more questions, concerns? You want to go ahead? Yes, sir. Yeah, I think uh, <clears throat> I do agree. Um, and back to the code enforcement stuff like that, it's it's a lot of telephone calls, you know, and it's a lot of the same telephone calls, you know. But um, uh, Mr. McDaniels makes a very good point, you know, but on and asking for our help, we need to probably also not just look at our districts. But we need to look for all of Gulf County, you know, and he's right. They pay taxes. So the people up, you know, white city and um that gets kind of overlooked and then you look way out there at Hyards creek and uh highland view i mean yes i mean it but it we need to take care of those people just like we take care of anybody else and they're not always the squeakiest wheel true you know but they do have needs wants and um and i mean you know hadn't been doing this for very long it's, it's, it's kind of rough when you go from private sector to the public and watching the pace of things, you know, I can't run my business that way. Now, I understand things are different, you know, um, but to, you know, calling the sheriff on Friday to go move that, uh, <laughs> we had squatters up in Hires Creek. People just pull off on the side of the road, pitch a tent, and live, you know. Uh, they were right up there. And anytime I ask Mark to do something, you know, I know it, it, he's there. Uh, you know, or Chris is there, and um, I just think we're going to need to do, we need to help all of Gulf County, and we need to work together, and um, we need to have code enforcement. It's put there for a reason, and we need to take care of our constituents. That's all I got. Let me just add one more thing, too. Like you said, a lot of times, you know, a lot of times people, you know, like I said, when they, when they talk about the county, basically they're talking about, I, I take it personal because I'm part of the county. And a lot of times people want to think that they want to just get up here and get in these seats, and that's it. But it's it's work. Uh, I got plenty of gray hairs from, I had, I think my hair was black when I got up in there, but, God, but it, it, t it takes work. And like I said, I, I not only I said, represent my district, like I said, we all represent each other's districts. Because people want our help, they don't. They don't care who they call, you know. what I'm saying, as long as they get a commissioner on the phone. So I think we, like I say, like I say, we all here. We need to. We need to show. We need to show love to each district one, two, three, and four, and five, because we're all here. But but the the people that 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 and uh, and just hear me out. The people that irks me sometimes are the people that on the outside. That they all they want to do is cause confusion. They all all they want to do is cause issues. But they don't sit in the seat. And a lot of times when you sit in this seat, it's, it's way different. Trust me. It's way different. Your phone is ringing night and day. 
and like I say, and we, we and like I say, commissioners, we're here to to help one another, and that's what we're here for to, to to try to help. We need he got an issue, we need to try to figure out this issue, try to get it done. All right, if, if Commissioner Farrell got an issue, I got to figure out a way. We got to figure out a way to try to help him get get his thing done because it's we all represent individual district, but we all represent Gulf County. And at the end of the day, that's that should be our. We should remember that we're here for the entire entire county. I represent the part of the city. Commissioner uh, Macron represent part of the city. So I can't just let it throw the city under the bus. Say you know what? I can't. No, I got to help these guys. You know what I'm saying? So heck, I'm I'm pretty much. Me and Commissioner Macron double. Like, we got to represent the city, and we got to represent the county. So, like I said, we got a lot to get. And y'all too. That's right. Y'all too. So, we we got a lot to uh, to work towards. Uh, and I think I think we can get there. But it takes, like I said, it takes time. It's gonna take some stepping on some toes. But I believe we can we can get it done. So, just want to add that part to it. So we're gonna to go to Mr. Mah Mr. Hammond right here. Gonna bring up Mr. Gurus at this Chris time. Mr. Gurus is here, and uh, we had a public hearing yesterday on our CDBGDR uh, list. And I want him to give you an update on the the last round of CDBGDR that prompted a right, article Gurus, in the paper. Let's just state your name for the record, please. Chris Gurus, Gurus and Associates, uh, the county CDBG grant administrator, right. for which I appreciate the opportunity. Yes, to sir. Be of some assistance. Um, as Mr. Hammond was saying, uh, county published a public hearing notice for the next round of funding uh, that we held yesterday afternoon. There was about $735 million or so in uh, Hurricane Michael CDBG disaster relief money. About half of that was allocated to housing projects, half of it to uh, infrastructure type projects through various programs. Uh, 223 million for infrastructure round one that we applied for last year round two that is coming up uh, due September 17th then there was a hometown revitalization program which we'll talk about in some detail in a second uh, that had about 60 million for commercial uh, districts uh, there will be uh, 109 million dollars for hazard mitigation projects matching funds uh, that application is due or those applications are due September 30. Uh, and then there's gonna be some leftover mitigation money from one of the South Florida disasters that uh, DEO is working with HUD to add to Hurricane Michael. And that funding opportunity will be uh, announced sometime in the near future uh, for later. So uh, we applied last year for a handful of infrastructure projects and the state approved uh, the water lines from the Cape to White City. Uh, then when it came time for uh, hometown revitalization, and so many names and acronyms and all that good stuff to keep up with, uh, in talking with the staff and uh, dealing with representatives of the port and economic development office, uh, it's been a long time effort uh, here locally to try to get the port uh, deepened and dredged to provide more economic opportunity uh, for industrial uses and reading the regulations or the guidelines which i brought with me today the state's uh, own documents defined commercial areas to include industrial they required that projects be in commercial districts which i think a, a real plain reading of the guidelines also means industrial areas we had to tie the projects to existing businesses uh, and we had four businesses that we identified that utilize the port facilities uh, and you know much to our surprise we didn't make the short list we didn't make the cut initially for a site visit and ultimately a few weeks ago when projects were announced uh, this was one of the projects that did not uh, make the cut and receive funding uh, when we inquired about can you share a little background as to why uh, and talking with the staff let me back up to after we worked with with the county staff and administration uh, and reading the regs, you know, we ran this project up the flagpole with the DEO staff before we applied and said, what are your thoughts? Do y'all think this would be something uh, that would be uh, a good project? And we kind of got a thumbs up uh, on that. And uh, my reading and interpretation of the guidelines, even if they had said, we don't like it, I, we thought it was a good project uh, based on the guidelines and the criteria. And because these projects were targeted towards commercial areas, you know, a lot of your commercial areas lie within inside the corporate limits of WeWa or Fort St. Joe, and, and 
and so we kind of struggled beyond the dredging project to come up with anything else that we thought was a good fit for that program. So uh, after it was determined we didn't make the cut, uh, we had some counsel with DEO staff, and some of the feedback we got back was, well, it just didn't fit the program. Uh, it was targeted towards downtown areas and small businesses, and, and you know, my response was, well, no different than the road that serves these downtown merchants where the customers come in and the delivery trucks can deliver goods, that waterway is what serves the commercial district that is the port. The port. Uh, and that waterway is, is their highway. Um, two things that came out of that conversation were, uh, number one, they said it was the highest rated project on the, on the scoring that they looked at, but they didn't feel like it fit the program. Uh, so that's kind of where we are on that. Uh, we've had feedback from multiple sources that we've been strongly encouraged to resubmit it in the upcoming infrastructure round. So at yesterday's hearing, uh, in addition to uh, informing the public that, let me look here, uh, that the county was contemplating a water treatment plant at White City that would connect the water source to the lines to the Cape. Uh, that there would also be uh, an application for a wastewater project uh, some for the airport and hold on one second Mr. Goose let me get you some more time your motion to extend so moved motion by Commissioner Carl second, second by Commissioner Farrow any opposition uh, motion passed five and no go ahead sir thank you thank you uh, <clears throat> and that there would also be uh, a potential application for uh, airport improvements uh, there was only one person from the general public that showed uh, he was interested in housing and economic development and we let him know that the county may uh, apply for the dredging as well uh, and that's a may. Y'all are going to have to vet that and consider that uh, as you go forward. We were strongly encouraged because of how high the application rated in the infrastructure round, even though they determined it not to fit their program, to reapply. I appreciate from talking to uh, the administration here that that water plant's a big priority, and we've got a grant that gets the water lines, and by God, we can't put a bunch of water lines in there and not connect the source to it. Uh, so uh, I explained to DEO that, you know, we've got other priorities in this funding round, or at least it appears to be that way. And they said, well, if you don't apply for the dredging, you're not going to get it. So, you know, we need to make an application if that's the desire of the commission. And uh, as it relates to priorities, we just need to communicate to DEO what our top priority is as they consider funding. Questions, commissioners, Mr. Gears? Yes, sir. Chris, yeah. thank you. I'm a little bit dumbfounded here. We were rated the highest rating according to what you just said. Now, who shot us down? Well, I will tell you that. You got uh, any names? Uh, uh, I've talked to some folks with some names. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I think it's in our collective best interest uh, as the county in pursuing this, this, this these efforts that, you know, we're not looking to, and I appreciate your comments earlier. Some folks' feelings may get hurt when you spoke earlier about code enforcement. But, I, you know, I think it's in our best interest. Uh, I'll share that information with you all uh, okay. some of the way, but I don't think it's in our best interest to be taking staffers and, you know, throwing them under the bus. They, they were helping us in good faith. I will tell you that uh, I've been doing this work for 26 years, most of it in Mississippi, a little bit in Alabama. I'm real pleased to be back home in my backyard to be helping with this. The DEO staff has gone through a lot of turnover since I began working on Hurricane Michael with the transition between Governor Scott uh, and Governor DeSantis. This, a lot of turmoil. The staff was kind of depleted even before Governor Scott left. It was just, there just was not a lot of support there on disaster recovery. Uh, they are working hard, trying hard. They've had a lot of staff turnover. Uh, but, but those folks that are there have been incredibly accessible to us. Whenever we've called and asked for guidance, whenever we've called for a meeting, they've been very responsive. And I think part of it was some turnover with staff. Uh, I think there was, I know there was a senior staffer that was reviewing the application and felt like it didn't fit. And some of the management there just said, okay, it didn't fit. I don't think there was any real political agenda as it related to uh, us not making the cut on this project. And we've done a fair amount of homework on, you know, what happened and why and where we are. I do think they like it. I just don't think they liked it for that program. They had they had small downtown business districts in their mind. All right. Thank you, sir. 
Sam, you got anything? In there? Just, and I'm, I'm going to be nice, and I, I, I love Chris, and he's, and he's being very nice. Uh, what really pisses you, me you, off. You need to be nice. About, I'm going to try to be nice. <laughs> is that We had three projects. We had the Washington Gym, we had the airport, and we had the port. And we pulled those out because they liked this project. And we talked to them several times. And, and we wanted to help this project. And we had a sequence of things that we needed to get funded. If we don't get the water plant funded since it's been held up hostage in another situation on the hazard mitigation side, we're going to have to borrow that money. And we don't want to be in that process. And I'm a million percent in support of the port. And I told this to Chris yesterday. But the port's funding is a three-legged, three-pronged level. They don't have any of the other two prongs yet. And I think that if they ever get one, they'll get the other two. But, but you know, we could get this funded, if they fund it ahead of our water plant, and it not get funded from DOT or Triumph, and it not happen. And then we're just out again. So, again, I think and the board's going to have to decide, you know, before the next month what your priority is. But right now is we've got a seven-point-something million dollar grant to tie water from the Cape to White City. We've got to finish that project, whether we have to go out and borrow the money or whether we get it through this program. And I just, I really hate getting shot out. I hate getting blasted in the paper. From, it was bull hockey. But especially when we're told that it's a great project and when it rated the highest, and it was a great project. It, it just, and, it, and it's sad that it didn't get funded. And, and let me qualify one thing uh, in talking to the staff. Let me get, let me get you some more time. Yes, motion. A motion by Commissioner Crone, second by Commissioner Farrell. Any opposition? Is, uh, motion is five the nine. person that reviewed it said it was the highest application that was personally rated by that staffer. I can't tell you it was unequivocally the highest out of all the applications that went in. But uh, at some point in the review, said, well, this just doesn't meet what we're trying to do. But uh, objectively, on the rating criteria, we're getting a lot of feedback that it'd be, it'd be a strong application going forward. But I respect uh, Mr. Hammond's position and uh, as it relates to the other funding sources. And uh, that's, that's a real consideration. I got a question. Yes, sir. Uh, Chris, there's, I mean, there is, why can't we do all three of them? I mean, there's a, that's a lot of money, you know? Well, and, and let me say this. We, we fought, and again, all of us went to Tallahassee. Mr. McCrone and I helped run off one of the bad guys, what I thought was a bad guy. And I actually really liked the new director and most of the, the new staff. But we fought from day one to get a cut, a guaranteed percentage. Gulf and Washington County went at the same time. Because we knew that we we're going to be competing with Bay and the city of Panama City and the city of Lynn Haven and the city of Callaway and all those. And, and all of those areas are bigger than us. So we knew that I'd said, give Bay County half the money right off the bat. Give them $350 million. Give Gulf County 10%. Give us 12%. Uh, give us a guaranteed amount where we can send projects. You get to pick the projects, but, but give us a cut of the money. Right now, we've got 1%, so far committed, 1% of this entire $750 million pot. 1% is going to Gulf County. Uh, Gulf and Bay were the most affected counties. And again, through politics, it got added. You know, Leon County got added, and Taylor County got added, and some others. The citizens of Gulf County got the brunt of this storm, Gulf and Bay, no doubt about it. We deserve a, a good cut of this money. And so far, it hasn't worked out that way. And we knew that it wouldn't work out that way because we were always at disadvantage because of population. So, yes, we can turn in a bunch, but at the end of the day, there's $100 million in this pot. 111. 111. We turn in $50 million worth of projects. It's not just, it's not, they're not going to fund that. I mean, and, and again, we, we're realistic to the fact that the first round, pretty much everybody got one item. And uh, at some juncture, the board's going to have to prioritize what you want. Okay. Any more questions, Commissioner? Uh, <coughs> yes, sir. Just to circle back, Mr. Chairman, I, I, me and Michael was talking about it. I just want him to clarify and just put it out there in layman's terms. That, and I know he's trying to be nice about it, but if you read the article in the Star, I mean, it may look like the county dropped the ball. I mean, right. so just clarify that, Michael. I mean, y'all were strongly encouraged to present that project, and and then basically we're dealt a bad hand anyway. 
we were told to turn in that project and we were told to back off the other two projects and that's exactly what we did okay well and i'll say the other two in my reading didn't of fit the, the mold that's right the other two just did not fit in the box in, in our opinion uh based on the criteria of that funding round all right any more questions for me? All right, we th thank you sir we appreciate it yes sir thank you yes, we sir. appreciate the opportunity and if we can get some feedback you know working with uh, clay and casey and the staff and putting all these things together september 17th will be here in the blink of an eye so the quicker we get some some feedback on that question be great okay. and, and, and chris I, we, we're going to be tied up here for a little bit if you'll call me this afternoon we got a, another our lobbyist call this morning another uh opportunity to apply for some money through the state so okay. i want you to help us with that very good thank you all All right thank you sir all right you're still at county St uh board business i'm sorry board business mr farrell you got anything i do um just kind of go back towards ward i got a just a while we're talking about that i i've had a couple people ask about the dog park I, you know i live a lot closer to them than you do so they won't call me um adding a picnic table and maybe doing some type of expansion I know we're tight but I think that'd be you know that's not gonna be a very expensive thing. and I did go up there on Sunday and look at it and it was there were a lot of people in there but um I just want to bring that up and another thing on uh highway 98 and Windmark. now that they're starting on that next phase there is a that's the only place that's got a dotted line in there and everybody's got a pass right there I don't know who we need to talk to um in the dot but that needs to be a solid line we're going to have a problem and also the uh uh sunset village we never got our uh the walk over there i mean we heard anything on that or any progress on it okay well other than that and i want to you know reiterate the the water issue we've got especially up in howard's creek and st joe beach and um uh, poor uh gulf air I uh, try to work through it and keep our uh, our ditches clean and um, the uh, David Whitfield Road did we go up there yesterday okay good good deal that's all I've got all right, thank you sir all right, Commissioner Rich <coughs> excuse me thank you mr. chair yes, I just want to um, take this time to um, um, give a shout out to Mark uh, for breaking it down earlier about um, explain to the public about the lack of um, inmate labor so I'm, I'm use my uh, my yard as an example when I mow out <clears throat> to the edge of the road I'll uh, mow down seven lots one way and two the other so I just ask the public to help clean up uh, out in front of your house and others to um, clean up the neighborhood then so that's it Thank you, sir. All right, Commissioner McCrum. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a couple of things, and uh, just want to get Michael and staff to uh, Highway 98 and C30. Uh, we're growing so fast on that south end, and any given time, you can see 20 or 30 cars in line trying to get out there. I, if we get with DOT and let, let's let's get a study going or something on that 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 area. Uh, the other thing I have is uh, we had another uh, Salinas Park Committee meeting and. We're moving forward on that. Clay wants to talk a little bit about that. Uh, uh, we have been approved for that grant. Uh, you want to tell us about that, Clay? Yes, sir. We've uh, I think we've had several, three maybe now, uh, park committee meetings, and so kind of bringing some um, clarity to the elements that we're going to try to put back in that park and lining that up with funding sources. And uh, you know, one of those we have a little bit of insurance money to kind of to use, but we're also going to use outside money as much as we can. And so, uh, the trails grant that we applied for, it seems positive. It's headed in a positive direction. We hope November or so of this year, maybe we'll get some official award on that. And and I think there's some other opportunities after our last meeting. Once we kind of nailed down what elements, you know, we want to put back in the park, I think FERDAP is a great, um, a, a good grant that we need to apply for. You know, for to help again offset having to spend all the insurance money let's use the insurance money as match and go you know, double or triple it if we can so those are things we're still looking at um, we're going over the next month you know between mark and myself we'll put together a, a drainage plan of some kind you know that's the biggest hurdle probably in that especially on the gulf side specifically uh, is just drainage so we'll put our heads together and, and come up with some kind of drainage plan and then you know ultimately 
back through the committee and then back to the board for y'all to kind of see what we've been working on and and you know see how you want to move forward with it uh, also I, I, I want to talk a little bit about the uh I've marking this been on on my end so i'm down there cleaning out ditches and it's an ongoing battle guys i know and uh uh hurricane mike, mike will change the whole dynamic of the county i tell you if you look now we get just a little bit of rain i got one spot no grove it's three or four foot deep and it can stay there for two days and uh, if you've not hadn't been through there it it had to get it to get pretty high guys and stay there and and uh the whole dynamic we lost so many trees and, and and the the water shed guys is, is is changing every day when you you know unfortunately when you get building it changes the watershed you know you don't have near the area to to absorb the water so so you know in defense of all these you know these our staff we we are working we are you know that they have been fighting this battle so so just just to say that and the last thing i have is uh i just want to give uh get a big jam to give some i get a lot of calls about dialysis how we're moving forward or give some good news or Come on, up, come yeah. on, come on up to the podium. You go. Don't take. The, uh, we'll get you out of the way right now, then. <laughs> Pardon me. Don't take your time right now, then. Yeah, if I okay. could. Yes, yeah. sir. Um, the uh, uh, you asked about dialysis. The uh, that pro that project is moving along, but they they've been delayed. To be honest with the co the COVID thing. Okay. Uh, it's hard for financial people to make a decision to open a new business. Uh, and when you know COVID is around us, and they're they're having time, they're really having trouble staffing their their current centers. The nursing we have a nursing shortage, so the project's moving. It should have been done by now, uh, but the flare up is is delayed. Okay, it's we still we still got it inside. That's all. It, no, there's not. No, it's just okay. a matter. It's moving, but you know, like I said, when you they were down to the to the financial people making the the final decision, and and then they're in a situation where. The COVID begins to impact their business and the uncertainty, especially with the nursing shortage they've got going on. That that was the issue on that one. Thank you. That's all okay. I have, Mr. Chairman. Just going to do the yes, rest. Sir. Okay. You got uh, it. Go ahead. I, just some good news. Uh, um, Gulf County uh, posted the lowest uh, unemployment rate in the Panhandle uh, in July. Uh, we were down to 4.2 percent, which is a 3 percent drop from the previous month, and half of our 8.4 percent unemployment a year ago in July. So. Uh, a pretty good number. Along with that, we were the only county that saw an increase in jobs from June to July. It was only six, but everybody else was negative. So that, that that's a plus. Um, Gulf County now has uh, 5,239 people employed in, in July, which is 25 more than in June, and 538 more than July of 2020. So the, our employment numbers are going. I think much of that goes some of it has to do with Eastern, but also has to do with the 11 jobs they've got at Skyborne and, and, and some other things. So we got some good things going on. I expect that trend to continue. Uh, we still show 228 people that are unemployed. There are about 400 jobs out there. So we, we, we ought to be able to shrink this a little bit more as we move along. Uh, just updating you, obviously, the, our, our number one priority uh, with, the, with the EDC is the, the floating dry dock. We continue to work that. The Triumph for Grant, there's been some discussions with those folks We're working on it. We're looking for some EDA money to, to, to change the metrics so that they correspond with what Triumph wants. So we're still working that. Uh, the first ferry was delivered uh, last week. The third ferry showed up this week, and I, I don't know if you noticed, the first day it got here it didn't even have towers on. It was really more of a shell. We, we, you know, the first ones came a little more assembled, so we still got some work there. Uh, we look for the um, we look for the Coast Guard cutters in January of twenty of twenty three. Uh, Skyboard's nearing completion of their emergency response airship that that they're building in conjunction with Gulf Coast State College. We expect to have a, a, a flight test of that in October. You'll certainly be invited to that. Uh, and they're near with some contracts with a couple of Central American countries. And that, again, will probably be sometime at the end of October. Hopefully that, that gets done. And then the last thing I had you already asked about was the dialysis service. Any questions? Questions, Commissioner? All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. <clears throat> uh, only thing I want to add, add to on, on my part is uh, I, want, I, want to take, I, want, I do want to thank Clay um, and the county staff for working well with the city on this Washington Recreation Bathroom issue. I uh, talked to Commissioner Langston, and he presented it to the uh, city and said they loved it. 
So, uh, Michael, great idea coming up thinking outside the box instead of building that thing on the outside, on the inside. It's perfect, and they loved it. So, uh, you want to add something? To well, if <clears throat> if we could, let's go ahead and get board permission to, uh, if the city has blessed it, to 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 match them dollar for dollar to to do this. And, okay. and again, we we think we can do it for fifty thousand uh, dollars together. But uh, and and advertise for contractors to get this done. Okay. All right. Well, I entertain a motion then. So uh, moved. That we, that we move forward and match them dollar second. for dollar. I got a motion by Commissioner Farrell, second by Commissioner McCrone. Any further board discussion on this? Anyone in the public on this? One in the public. Uh, any uh, opposition to that motion? All right. Motion passed 5 and 0. Oh. And, and we can get with the city staff if they want to advertise, that's fine, or if they want us to do it either way. Uh, but okay. I think that that is a much better solution to that problem all right and, and the other thing i want to ask is this if we could and i know it's a city building but that, that <clears throat> facility out there is man it's tremendous it's, it's a blessing to the community because uh, if you go out there and during the summer uh, you will see for yourself um so if we could and i don't know if we have to get cases to look for but we could try to find us some kind of funding to to help with it to help with something infrastructure or something the windows because that building needs some a little tender love and care uh, and it's utilized for, I mean, it's a blessing to the community. So if we could, I want to ask that staff go out and try to find some funding somewhere, somehow that we can help uh, spend and help upgrade that building. All right. That's all I have. All right, moving on down to number six. Mr. Lee, you ready? Quasi-judicial hearing, review and consideration of the PDRB application. First one up, small-scale land use map amendment, Har Harold Magnum. Parcel ID number 02596-00R. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Mr. First, we have a small-scale map amendment. Uh, Mr. Harold Mangum located at 2620 uh, Highway 71 South, Wee Florida, 32465. Parcel ID number 02596-00R, Section 36, Township 4 South, Range 10 West, they're asking for approval to change a 1.35 acre parcel designated as residential low density to mixed commercial residential, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you, sir. Is anyone here to wish to speak on this item? If you're here, please step forward at this time. Anyone here wish to speak on this item? Yes, ma'am, come on up. Come on up to the podium, please. Mr. Chairman, you want to wave the quasi Yes, I'm going to ask her right now. Do you have any objection with us waving the quasi-judicial ju hearing? Tell me what that means. Snow, right. <laughs> explain it to her, please. Kathy, what they're going to do is if you waive it, then they'll have a public hearing. If you don't waive it on behalf of the applicant or the public or the commission, then they're going to swear everybody in, and they'll take uh, sworn testimony after the clerk swears everybody in, and it becomes part of the record. So if you're not requiring that formality, then the commission can entertain just having a public hearing for the purposes of this application. That would be fine. Okay. All right. Can we go wait? Can we go? All right. Uh, motion to waive. So, so do I need to Second. say anything? Oh, excuse Thank me. You. Motion to wait. All right. Uh, motion by Commissioner McCrone, second by Sorry. Commissioner McDaniel. All right. Anyone in the public uh, on this waiving this quasi? All right. Any, uh, any opposition to that motion? All right. Motion passed 5 and 0. Right. State your name and address for the record, please. Kathy Jones, 106 North Caicos Drive, Fort St. Joe, Florida. Right. You got the floor. Thank you. you oh, I have to talk. Yeah. You, <laughs> if you want, she don't have to now. She don't have to. She don't, you don't have to oh. if you don't want to. I can go back to Mr. Lee. He gonna he'll break it down for us. If he can break it down. I'm just <laughs> under the understanding that this property is so close to the same sort of zoning that it's not an issue based on the LDR. So I'm gonna let Lee take okay. over. Okay. All right. All right. That's fine. <laughs> yes, ma'am. All right. Before before you miss it, anyone in the public, anyone else in the public want to come before the board on this issue? Anyone else? All right. You good? Thank you. All right, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this. Uh, item was properly noticed in the paper and on the courthouse and on our building per Florida statutes. Uh, the PDRB <coughs> voted 4-0 unanimous to approve the variance. It do, I mean the land use change. It does uh, lie within the one mile of an existing mixed commercial residential, so there's no issue there. Uh, the property is is large enough to handle it, so they voted 4-0 to approve. The land use change, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, Commissioner, any questions or concerns with this? Any questions from Ms. Uh, 
Mr. Collinsworth or on, on Ms. Jones and Mrs. Jones in reference to this. All right, so one more time, the PDRB voted voted for all. For all to approve, Mr. To Chairman. approve, okay, all right. All right, uh, I need a motion to, to waive the uh, substantial reading. So moved. All right, motion by Commissioner Fowler. Second. Second by Commissioner McCrone. Anyone in the public on waiving this reading? Any opposition to that motion? Any motion to waive? That is five and oh. All right, what's the wishes of the board? Motion to approve. All right, motion by Commissioner McCrone to approve. Second. Second by Commissioner McDaniel. All right, any further board discussion on this? Anyone in the public? Anyone in the public? Any opposition to that motion? All right, motion to approve passes five and no. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, next on the agenda, we have another small scale land use map amendment. The applicant is a Coast View Lawn and Landscape LLC located at 3369 County Road 386, Fort St. Joe, Florida 32456, parcel ID number 03516-010R, Section 7, Township 6 South, Range 11 West. They're asking for approval to change a 0 .087 acre parcel with a land designation of residential low density to mixed commercial residential for your consideration, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, anyone here wishes to speak on this issue? Come on up, sir. All right, same question for you. Do you have any objection with us waiving the quasi-judicial hearing? That's fine. Right. All right, I'll get a motion to waive. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Second. McDaniel, second by Commissioner Farrell. Anyone in the public on this waiving this? All right, any opposition to that motion? All right, motion to waive as is uh, 5 and 0. Oh. State your name and address for the record, please. Jonathan Cooksey, uh, 383669, County Road 386. All right, you got any questions or concerns? You got the floor. No, I'm, uh, I'm good. Now, I do have, well, I've, I do have a question on the um, maintenance of ditches. We're going through the process of getting a culvert pipe put out front. And uh, I heard earlier y'all mentioned, you know, the water drainage out there. I noticed about a week ago we had a uh, pretty heavy rain, you know, and it got backed up out front. And we're getting a three foot, three in or 36 inch culvert pipe put in. and. The water is draining north towards Weeba, headed towards a big creek, and we've noticed some smaller pipes causing the backup there. And I was going to see if we can kind of go over or kind of see what gets managed on that or how that gets taken care of or how that gets going about with the water being backed up. I mean, it was as high as the uh, Overstreet Highway. You want to say something? Uh, Mr. Chairman, we, we can address that okay. whenever whenever this this one's over. Okay. If you don't mind. Okay. All right. Question. Yes. Now sir. you're on a, on three eighty six going north. You'll be on the left side. Yes, sir. I saw that pipe north yesterday. of Basswood. Yes, sir. I saw it yesterday laying there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I know where yeah. It yeah. It was in the ditch and then it floated up to the height of the road. Yep. All right, Mr. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Uh, Collins. What, what does, uh, what's the recommendation? Mr. There? Chairman, the PDRB voted 4-0 to approve the land use change. Uh, this one as well was advertised per Florida statute, um, and it, it's across the street from mixed commercial residential as it sits, so there's no issue with that as well. So they voted 4-0 to approve the change, Mr. Chairman. All right, thanks. So. All right, Commissioners, any questions for this gentleman or for Mr. Collinsworth? All right, so the PDRB voted for to approve. All right, uh, can I get a motion to waive the formal reading? So moved. All right, motion by Commissioner Farrell. Second. Second by Commissioner McCrone. Anyone in the public on waiving this formal reading? All right, any opposition? All right, motion passes 5-0. Oh. All right, what's the wishes of the board? Move to approve. All right, I got a motion by Commissioner Farrell to Second. approve. Second by Commissioner Rich. All right, any uh, further board discussion on this? Anyone in the public on this? Anyone in the public? Right. Any opposition to that motion to approve? All right, motion passes 5 and 0. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Chairman, if you want me to address the pipe issue while he's here, uh, once they come in a, in a
Thanks, sir. That's big back. Is it is it dead? Oh, we got another one on the other side, don't we? We got one over there. So having somebody drop the ball on charging those things up. <laughs> oh, we, you still got the floor, Mr. Collins, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, next on the list, we have a variance application from Presnell's Vacation Resort and RV Park located at 2115 SR30A, Fort St. Joe, Florida, 32456, parcel ID number 06252-000R. Section 36, Township 8 South, Range 11 West. There, we're wanting the board to give them relief <coughs> from a flood height designation that FEMA requires. Uh, and they was wanting relief from the 50-foot wetland setback that is uh, required per our LDR. Uh, in the meeting, they did back off and pull the variance for the 50 foot mean high water setback but they're still requesting the the base flood elevation relief for your consideration mr chairman all right thanks sir is anyone here who wishes to speak on this issue anyone here who wishes to speak on this issue you here please step forward all right anyone in the public want to speak on this issue anyone in the public all right Mr. Collins, we still have the floor. With the Mr. Chairman, just for uh, board uh, comments, uh, the PDRB voted to 4-0 to approve the, the exemption, but there was no exemption that was provided by the applicant at the time of the board meeting. Uh, they just provided documentation of why they think they met the exemption. Um, this exemption was given to another owner that actually had a FEMA exemption, but as of today, we've not been provided with a FEMA exemption on this piece of property, Mr. Chairman. Okay, all right. So what we gonna, so, so I'm kind of confused, so what we gonna approve? What, what are we approving? Well, if, they, they, if, they, if they presented to the PDRB to to get the exemption for flood relief to build below flood um, but what they presented to the board the PDRB board wasn't a FEMA exemption it's just 10 items that they think they qualify for but they actually haven't gotten the exemption yet um, and I think there may have been a little confusion on the PDRB board thinking they had it when they really didn't have it so it's up to this would now come to the BOCC for final vote on whether to approve or deny the variance to allow the building to be built back below flood, Mr. Chairman. So, so what you're saying, Lee, is they have no FEMA exemption no, sir, in I've, place. I've not seen one as of yet. I know we worked on that other exemption for six or eight months back and forth and finally got a reply from FEMA. And I, I mean, I, I don't want to hurt these guys. And, you know, I said the whole time, if they had a FEMA exemption, I'm fine with it. But as, as of now, they have no FEMA exemption. So. No, sir, Mr. Commissioner, I have not seen one. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. If, uh, if he hit on a key word, think. Hmm. If we go approve this and then they get washed out, then who's going to be held liable? The county? Uh, FEMA? Mr. Commissioner, if, if the board votes to approve a exemption without fe getting a FEMA exemption, and there is a a problem exactly. down the road. Uh, I think worst case scenario, we could get kicked out of our CRS program for a flood. Uh, not saying that would happen, but it's certainly a possibility. Uh, we have allowed of the 20 years that I've been here one, and that was a building that was there prior to and did get the FEMA exemption as Mr. McCrone was speaking of. So that's the only one I'm aware of. And just to, to go to go what Lee, and I, I was going to let Jer ask Jeremy to speak on this, but at any time, FEMA can come in and audit any exemptions or anything we've put in place. Am I right? And 
In our discussions, it was back in um, late 18, early 19, when you had that variance application come up over in Jones Homestead, and it was for a pre-existing fishing industry. Um, and so they met the dependent use under the CFR guidelines. That, that was the exception that they were seeking. They existed beforehand, and it was there for a fishing industry, commercial fishing. Um, so I pulled the memo that you all approved back in January of 2019, and it was subject to state and federal approvals of those exceptions that Lee and you were talking about. Um, it was a memorandum from Michael, and it said subject to state and federal approvals of them. But they'll pull those files. So to answer your question, Commissioner, they'll say, which ones did you grant? Where did you grant variances? Mm -hmm. And as Lee just said, we've granted one. So they'll be easy. They'll say, well, just can we see that file? Let's audit that file and see what the functional dependent use was. So on that pre-existing one, it was a commercial fishing industry. On this one that you have in front of you, again, you can do the same conditions, which are it meets state and federal guidelines and FEMA approves it. And they have that, and they can show the county that, then they can move forward. That was the recommendation from your administrator two years ago on the one that you gave out, and it's documented in the file. And so when they come document that file, they'll watch this meeting, they'll look at the minutes, they'll look at the memorandum, they'll look at your vote, they'll look at the variance that was given, and it has to meet those criteria under the CFR. So I have the memorandum here. I gave it to Michael. Um, Lee's familiar with it, and Lee referenced the one you gave out after the hurricane. So to build back below that flood elevation, you'd have to have that dependent use that pre-existed prior to the um, building it back. All right. So Mr. Hammond, what's, what's your opinion on this? <laughs> I, I did not attend the planning board meeting. Uh, and, and I understand the applicant provided some CFR language uh, to, to back up the deal. The, the earlier the TAC met, me and Brad and Lee, and, and denied it based on we didn't have the evidence to approve it. Uh, since 1990, we went 29 years without granting a single variance, okay? And then we granted one in 2019. Uh, with some stipulations and and went through a long, just like I said, it was a long process. It was probably a, a year process going back and forth from the hurricane to the time that we uh, gave this conditional approval. Uh, my, my guess is this from the outside, that the stretch would be just about anybody could ask for the same thing. Exactly. Uh, I can think of a similar, and again, I'm not knocking it either, and, and had, had Presnell's been requesting to build it in the same place it was 30 years ago, then I'd have been fine with grandfathering that in as a, you know the existing concrete building. But right now, this what I, I'm assuming, and this is an assumption, so they're, they're using that park model trailer to run the store out of, which I was against from get-go. If a similar situation, Howard Creek, they they had their little, and we made them elevate and. Uh, so again, I, I think the safest thing to do would be to do the, if you wanted to pass this, would be to do the same thing we did before, which is get the FEMA and the state to say, yes, this is a allowable exemption, and then, then the county's off the hook. So I really don't know if, we, if the recommendation would be to table it pending that or, or conditional approval pending that, approval from the state and the feds, but again, I. I I, I did not see the evidence to, to, for the county to give a variance. Again, I was not at the planning board meeting, and the planning board saw the evidence made by Mr. Colston, and I, and I have complete confidence in the planning board. I think to cover us at a minimum, we need to put these stipulations in that we did for the one in 2019, in my opinion. Okay. All right. Any more questions, commissioners? Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes. Sir. One of the stipulations, too, that we, we did require the first one, the only one that we've done was they, they had to go to the same size that was there prior to the storm, same footprint. Uh, the applicant on this one did uh, mention to the PDRB that they actually wanted to enlarge the size of this new building. Uh, I think one of the stipulations should be if, if it is approved that they get treated the same way. They don't get a bigger building. They can go back with the same size building that was there before. Um, plus that, that was one of the stipulations that FEMA required of the first applicant as well.
to go back to St. Philip Branch. So just, just for board knowledge. All right. Chairman. Thank you, sir. All right. We had a motion to waive the formal reading. So moved. All right. Motion by Commissioner McCall. Second. Second by Commissioner Farrell. You don't want the public on waiving this formal reading. Are any opposition to that motion? All right. Motion passed 5-0. All right. What's the wishes of the board? Is a motion in order? Yes. Yes, sir. I'm, uh, it's too much gray here for me. I'm going to make a motion. We deny this. Let them reapply and get the ducks in order. All right. Got a motion by Commissioner McDaniel to deny until they get everything lined up correctly. <coughs> Second. Second by Commissioner Rich. Uh, any uh, further board discussion on this? All right. Anyone in the public? Anyone in the public? All right. Any opposition to the motion? All right. Motion passed 5 and 0. All right. You still got the floor, Mr. Collinsworth. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Last on the list, we have a variance application for Karen Traywick and Vicki Gobble, location at 7199 West Highway 98, Port St. Joe, Florida, 32456, parcel ID number 03817-002R. In section 5 Township 7 South Range 11 West. They're requesting a 9.3 foot encroachment into the southeast setback of 9.5 feet and a 14.8 foot encroachment into the roadside 25 foot setback for your consideration, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Anyone here wish to speak on this issue? Yes, sir. Come on up. Do you have any objection with us waiving the quasi-judicial hearing? No, sir. All right. Entertain a motion to waive. So, so moved. Motion second. by Commissioner Farrell. Second, second by Commissioner McCrone. Right. Any uh, anyone in the public against waiving this? Right. Any opposition to that mo motion? All right. Motion passed five and over. Wave. State your name, address for the record, please. Jonathan Brown, Sublime Design Services, 209 7th Street, Port St. Joe. All right. You got the floor, sir. Uh, just want to get the. Uh, variance to go through. We're trying to uh, encroach into the side setback where there's no uh, chance of anything being built on the uh, side as being owned by TBJ Investments. I have a maintenance, maintenance agreement from them that's signed and ready to go for it. Okay. All right, Mr. Collins. Mr. Chairman, uh, the, the PDRB voted 4-0 to approve the variance contingent upon getting a recorded copy of that maintenance agreement which was not provided at the time of the meeting. Uh, so they were fine to, to shed a little light on this. This is a, a, uh, a small lot there on the bayside across from one of the end streets at St. Joe Beach. That was a duplex to start with. Uh, now they're wanting to split off and do single family on each one. So they pushed themselves off to meet the setbacks on the northern side. In return, they had to go to the property line on the south side, which is all common area for St. Joe Beach, and that's what the recorded easement should be for. Um, and then as far as the roadside, the board approved the planning years ago for us to, to allow that 10-foot roadside, which they've allowed through the whole place down there. So the only, the only contingency on this one was for planning to receive a copy of that recorded easement. So if it's not recorded, we need to get it. If it is, we need a copy. Okay. All right. And they voted four zero to approve, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you, sir. All right, board. Any any questions? Yes, sir. Um, Jonathan, those so the the two structures are going to be they're still in between the two are going to have the nine and a half, nine and a half. Correct. Okay. So you're just going to abut it to the other side. Okay. Good. Good. Any more questions, concerns, commissioners? All right. For, for That's the, my street. For the applicant. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so the, the, PDR, the PDRB voted for all. I need a motion to waive the uh, reading. So Formally, moved. Motion by Commissioner Farrell. Second. Second by Commissioner Crone. All right. Anyone in the public against waiving this formal reading? All right. Motion to waive passes 5 and 0. Oh. All right. What's the wishes of the board? I move to approve. All right. Motion by Commissioner Farrell to approve. Second. Second by Commissioner McDaniel. Any further, further board discussion on this? Anyone in the public? All right. Motion to any opposition to that motion? Mm -hmm. Motion to approve, pass 5 0. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Thanks Charlie. All right, all right Thank this you, time. Mr. Chairman, that's all I have. That's all you got. All right, yes, sir. This time, let's take a short five minute recess.